Okay, so hey guys, welcome back to Edge 3D CGI and in this part of the tutorial, which is actually the last part of this series we're going to go ahead and set up a simple rendering um, and lighting setup so you can go ahead and create uh, some fairly nice renders so we're going to go ahead and use Mental Ray to go ahead and render this out so if you haven't already, you're going to have to go to Windows, Settings, Preferences and then go to your Plugin Manager and in your plugin manager you need to find this guy called Maya Tom R which is actually the mental ray plugin which will either be under here or it's going to be somewhere up here and you're just going to have to go ahead and check it on uh, to load it and auto load and then go ahead and click refresh and it should be all loaded so once we have that all set up we're going to go to our rendering um, setup by clicking this icon okay so once we have this there are loads of settings in here that we're going to go through some of them but let's just go ahead and see how a render looks by default so I'm going to go ahead and click this icon here and as you can see it will go ahead and give us the render view of our actual house now in the rendering view it's actually pretty useful to go through a couple of things the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and show is this button right here which will basically keep this image and you can go ahead and compare your new renders so I'm going to go ahead and click this icon so it will go ahead and save my render and we can go ahead and compare our new renders to them now another useful setting as well is you can go to options and test resolution and you can go ahead and set this to be 50% of your actual resolution so if you're rendering a large image let's say a 2K image or a 4K image, it will only render in this preview 50% of it so you can render a lot faster. For now I'll actually leave it on render settings because I'm not going to render a large image. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this window and then go back into our rendering settings and let's go through some of the settings that we're going to use. Now for lights, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and create a new a loads of different lights to go ahead and set this up. We're going to go through uh, mental rays, physical sun and sky. So I'm not going to go into all the lighting setup for now. So let's go to, first of all, go to indirect lighting. Okay. And let's just go ahead and click physical sun and sky and click on create. And all this mere physical sun and sky and attribute tilt will pop up and we'll go through some of these settings in just a second. So in these settings, make sure that we have global illumination turned on. And I'm not gonna go ahead and explain all these different things for now. I will just go ahead and go through some of these settings and turn them on to get us a fairly decent result. Then after we have that on, go to ambient occlusion and turn that on as well, which will render us our ambient occlusion as well. And then go back into our common passes, turn on enable color management. And here in the image format, we can go ahead and set what sort of image we want to render out. We'll just go ahead and use a TIFF. Once we go further down, as you can see, we can go ahead and select our renderable camera. So it's currently set on perspective because that's the only camera we have in our scene and I think that will do perfectly fine in this scenario. So make sure that our camera is positioned from the angle that we want to render out and it will render from this camera. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is in the image size I'll just go ahead and set this to be a 2k square and in the render options I'll just make sure that I've got enable default light turned off. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this render will look. I'll go ahead and click on the rendering icon. As you can see, it'll pop up in just a second. Or well, depending on the computer, it will go ahead and render out our image. Okay, so there we go, there's our render. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll save a snapshot of this as well. And now with this slider on the bottom, we can go ahead and compare our different renders that we created. So this looks pretty good already, but I'm going to go ahead and change the light direction and also our colors are a bit washed out. So we're going to change the light intensity and maybe, maybe give this a plain black background. So I'm going to close this again. And in the mere physical sky setting, I'm going to go ahead and change the multiplier to be um, 0.2, which will help us with our washed out colors. And this is to do with um, 
linear color management and so on. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail and gamma correction and so on. I'm not going to go into any of that. So I'm going to leave all these settings on default. What you guys can do is you can go around and play around with these values and do a test run each time and compare what each setting does. That's the best way of learning these really. So experimenting and same in these render settings, you can go around and play with all these different settings. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a plane. Okay. Rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it up, which will be our background. So I'm going to just move it, rotate it this way. So it fills up the whole thing and then go to create new material. I'm going to go ahead and give this a Lambert, rename it to be black. Back ground. Oh, and there's a Lambert that we assigned to it and name this black background material. And go to the color, and I'm going to go ahead and make this completely black. So now that our backdrop is created, as you can see, it will go ahead and create this light note here, which basically just shows us the direction of the light. Um, that the physical sun and sky created. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this up. If I able to select it, move it around this way and rotate it. And we can also see our light direction. If you go ahead and check this button here, which means use all light, so you can see it will go ahead and show us how our scene or our mesh will actually look with this light. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it a bit more. Maybe move it this way, move it up, move it back a bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Maybe I want some more shadows over this side. Maybe not that much. So again, I'm just playing around with the angle of my light. Okay, so once that's all set up, I'm going to go ahead and give this another test render and see how it looks. And my back black background is out of the frame but it doesn't really matter because we can get it and just crop this. Okay so as you can see here's our render. I'm going to go ahead and take a snapshot again and we can compare it to our last one. Okay so that looks pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and make this a bit bigger and our colors are still washed out a little bit so I'm just going to go ahead and change the light intensity and so on. I'll make this a bit bigger. Select my light Maybe change the light intensity to be 0 0.8 or so. Go back to my mere physical sun and sky. And maybe I will also turn down the disk intensity to 0 0.8. And it should be pretty good. I'll go ahead and render this out one more time and see how. So now this stage you have and see what works best. But once you have a fairly decent one, you can go ahead and take this inside Photoshop and make color corrections and so on, make it brighter or lighter. So once you have a half decent render, you can go around and play with this a bit more in post in Photoshop by adding different sort of effects and levels and so on. So this was our basic tutorial on creating a pretty decent render. I hope you guys enjoyed this series and I'll see you guys in one of our future series and thanks for watching Edge 3D CGI.